In this vlogcast, I'll be looking at the general conventions for a digipack. One of the main features of a digipack is the way they look compared to a plastic jewel CD case or a vinyl. As you can see here, a digipack has a softer paper feel to it and has two or more sides, whereas a plastic jewel case has only two sides and is bulkier. Fans prefer to collect digipacks than jewel cases as they imitate vinyl without it being the same size and price of vinyl. Here you can see that Dua Lipa's vinyl album cost $22.95 and the CD cost $13.95. Vinyls are expensive due to the production costs, but they've become increasingly popular again as fans enjoy collecting them. Digibacks are lighter and smaller than plastic jewel cases, so it's cheaper to distribute as well as the store being able to be stock more of them. Digipacks either have four, six or eight panels to them with one or more trays inside for a singular CD or multiple CDs. As you can see here, this is an eight panel digipack with just one tray, whereas this is an eight panel digipack with three trays. Here's a real life example of this. Some digipacks also have pockets. There are diagonal pockets, slip pockets or tube pockets. These are diagonal pockets. These are slip pockets. And these are tube pockets. The next convention we expect to see is the artist's name or logo. This isn't always the case. For example, here we have Harry Styles' album Harry Styles from 2017, which doesn't have his name nor the album title. This leads us into our next convention being album title. It is typically the second most prominent text after the artist's name on the front panel and is usually in a different font to the artist's name. Yet again, this isn't always the case. This album cover is counter-typical, as here we can see the font is the same on Harry Styles' name, as well as the album title Fine Line, and they are the same size. The next thing we expect to see is the track listing on the back panel of the digipack. There are occasionally bonus tracks included, which we can see here with David Guetta and here with Ellie Goulding. The tracks can be numbered, which we can see here with Lana Del Rey, and here with the 1975, or not numbered, which we can see here with the Arctic Monkeys. Another common convention we expect to see are additions, bonuses, or extras on the front panel. On Beyonce's Greatest Hits, we can see the yellow rectangle in the bottom right corner, which has an including written on it, with song titles underneath. On Lady Gaga's The Fame Monster, it's in the top left corner, where it says limited edition version, as well as eight brand new tracks. The next convention is the small print. We expect, to see, we expect to see the label and who the rights belong to on the back panel. With this, we expect to see the P and C symbols, which mean copyright and phono record. We can clearly see this on Ellie Golden's Halcon Days. The small print says that it's owned by Polydor, a subsidiary of Universal, which is one of the big three dominating the music industry, which are Sony BMG, Universal Music Group and Warner Music Group. We can also see this on Foo Fighters' album Echoes, Silence, Patience and Grace. And here is another example on the back of Adele's 21 album. Another thing we expect to see on the back panels are the barcodes. Here are some examples. Occasionally, we're able to see a QR code which would link to the artist's website, and if not, the link is found near the small print. The next convention I will look at is the external panels link. On, Ar on Arctic Monkeys AM Digipack, the front and back link, as on the front we have a white squiggle on a black background, which links onto the back panel, where it's just a straight white line on a black background. On the 1975's album, The 1975, the front panel shows a neon sign with a neon border resting on a grey wall and the floor. The back panel is the same, but instead of the 1975 in neon, we get the track listing. On Kanye West's album, Graduation, the front panel shows a bear flying towards the foreground, but the back panel shows it in the opposite way where it's flying towards the background. There are a few examples where it doesn't link as well, like Lana Del Rey's digipack for her album Born to Die. The only link here really is the font and the colorway. The next convention I will look at is the inner panel flow. On Rihanna's loud digipack, there is a singular image of her lying in roses, which is split up over the three inner panels. 
on Beyonce's greatest hits, we have two separate images, but they still match as they are black and white. The, the next, next and last convention I will look at is the spine. We typically expect to see the name of the artist and album on the spines and, catalog and the catalogue number, whether they link with the external panels like this or not like this. As you can see, the name of the artist typically comes before the album name. Thank you for watching my vodcast on Digipack General Conventions.